Hello and welcome to iNerdius. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the things that I like to watch on YouTube myself. And I'm going to focus on one area, which is essentially uh, food and, and or cooking, cooking channels on YouTube. And the ones that I, I really like. Now, before I start, <laughs> here's, here's a list of all the cooking channels that I that I watch. So I had to narrow it down because I don't want this video to go on for five hours, but I will start with a channel that I think is um, stands out because it's not really about cooking, it's about making cocktails, and that is um, Behind the Bar with Kara Devine. I have watched that channel to learn how to make a bunch of different cocktails. I love her eggnog. Uh, her eggnog recipe is great and it's easy. Alton Brown also has a great eggnog recipe, but it's a little more complicated, might be closer to uh, the way it was originally made perhaps, and actually tastes better. But uh, the one that Cara Devine does on Behind the Bar is delicious. I also used her recipe for um, uh, whiskey sours and uh, a few other cocktails. And so if you're into cocktails, definitely watch her channel. I think it's great. She is a uh, young woman from Scotland who, if I remember correctly, worked at or works at a bar called Bamba in Melbourne, Australia. And uh, during uh, the COVID lockdown, when the bar was essentially not making any money because it was closed, she started doing videos on how to make cocktails. And she's great. Totally, totally love that show. Another one that's also different that I haven't actually made anything from, but I really enjoy is um, is uh, Tasting History, it's called. And in this one, I can't remember the guy's name, but he just tracks down either recipes or he, re or he reverse engineers um, recipes based on foods or meals that people ate uh, into, at different times in history, going all the way back to, as far as I know, at least ancient, I think he even did beer from like ancient Egypt or something. So if, if that wasn't him, no big deal. He's done a whole bunch of other things. So really interesting, really interesting uh, YouTube channel, highly recommend it. Um, as far as uh, my own cooking, as I, as I mentioned, Alton Brown, he actually lives here in Georgia. And I love I love his cooking books. I loved watching his shows when I watched the um, the Food Network, and I love watching his um, his YouTube channel. And I have made things that he has made. He had a Christmas soup that was delicious. I, off the top of my head, I can't remember everything that's in it, but I think it had kale, um, sliced um, kielbasa and like white white beans perhaps the christmas colors white green and red in in a soup was delicious um another one that i i watch all the time and i make uh and i've made several dishes is sip and feast and he tends to make mostly uh, italian dishes he's in new york and makes a lot of pasta dishes and i've made several of those probably my favorite from his uh, channel is uh, one where you take uh, grape tomatoes or you know small tomatoes and you put them in a pan and it, you know with olive oil, big pan. Uh, you cover the pan with them and you you let them uh, you let them um, you let them cook and they start to uh, get soft and you can smash them down. Got to do it carefully because the stuff can come squirting out. And you make a you make basically a quick an easy tomato sauce with with those little tomatoes and you throw some garlic in there and then like you can add i think the uh on the um america's uh test kitchen they they made something similar or they made the same thing and on one of those two i use the the uh the trick of adding um uh tomato paste from a you know the tube and it's got a rich tomatoey flavor and that helps deepen the flavor but i've made it without that and it's been perfectly fine so he's he, he did that dish that i loved um he, so and i i've made other and i've made other things by him i love i love the stuff that he cooks and he's he, he he's in no nonsense he just gets right into it 
uh, doesn't mess around. Um, another one that I like is uh, Not Another Cooking Show is really good, and Pro Home Cooks, both of those are really good. I think they might also both be in New York. I'm not too sure about that. One of them is, and I they, they overlap sometimes in terms of the kinds of things that they make, but they're very, very interesting. And I have at least gone out and sought food. Sometimes they'll do tastings and they'll and then they'll deconstruct what they eat. So like one of them did, I want to say it was not another cooking show, did a show on um, a uh, Italian beef sandwich with, which originated in Chicago, actually, or I think it did. And he talked about that. And then I went and sought one out when I was eating when I was eating beef, I'm not right now, and um, wanted to try it just to see what it was like. But both of those are really good. Not another cooking show and pro home cook, pro home pro home cooks, I should say. And another one that I really like is Chef Billy Parisi. Um, he is he, he he's the one I I go to for like the classic, uh, I don't know. Rat Pack, you know, Frank Sinatra and the gang going out to a, a restaurant, having cocktails and getting, uh, I don't know, a steak Diane and uh, cream spinach. And, and I and actually made <laughs> steak Diane and cream spinach again when I was eating when I was eating beef based on Bill, Billy Parisi's recipes. Um, and I think it was his and really liked it. He's really good because he he has a a, a way of explaining things where you learn a basic skill that you can then use in other things and he really harps on that a lot and that's really great um another good one is um ethan chablowski i think is his name and he this guy is like a, a genius <laughs> um he seems to be able to make things better that other people make and he just takes them and makes them better he's the one that i got that I discovered um, making um, uh, red onion, taking red onions and um, slicing them up and putting them in a, you know, boiling um, uh, water and vinegar together and then putting those in a jar with the red onions and then putting them in the fridge and getting pickled red, red onions out of it and delicious. And he was the one who sort of turned me on to that and I, I love them. I've used other other things from his uh, recipe, uh, from his videos as well, and I've made them and they've been delicious. Two others that I really like uh, are Brian Lagerstrom, I think is how you say it. I, I'm, I hope I'm not butchering this name, but he's another one who takes things and sort of gives them, uh, you know, updates them. He'll also do classic stuff and then he'll maybe he'll show you how to do it, how to update it. A lot of them kind of do that, actually, which is really cool. I can't remember if I made something from his channel or not. I want to say that I did, but I can't remember what it was off the top of my head. But it might have been, might have been a bread, uh, actually. I want to, but the one I want to try that he did, he made bagels, and they looked like they were perfect. And so I, I will probably try to make bagels someday <laughs> uh, that he made. And then Adam Ragusia, I think is is how you pronounce his last name. He um, has a combination of, of cooking and then also commentary and, and um, some science behind the cooking and that kind of thing. Very interesting. I actually tried a recipe from him that I liked that I'm not sure if I'll make it again because it was kind of a pain in the butt, but it was essentially um, you take cauliflower and you rice the cauliflower and you then take some tilapia and you put them all in a, in a big um, uh, Dutch oven and you cook it all together and that sort of a meal that he was making when he needed to uh, when he was working out and wanted to um, cut out some uh, some useless carbs and get a lot of protein and so I made that actually and it was delicious but you know that's all I mean I had to I had to eat I had to eat it like twice a day uh, every day for like oh, two weeks in order to finish it so uh but but interesting and i've also made other things that he has um talked about on his his show and let me see what are the other ones that i really like um i have to say that i mentioned it before america's um test kitchen i love america's test kitchen i have one of their books i used to watch the show on pbs um 
I have made so many things from America's Test Kitchen. I have um, I have uh, learned so many interesting cooking techniques from America's Test Kitchen that it just is an invaluable resource, I think. And I even used to, at one point, I even subscribed to their magazine and all of that back years ago. And um, highly recommend, highly recommend their show. Another one that I really like um, that I have made stuff from is Rainbow Plant, excuse me, is Rainbow Plant Life. And that is a young Indian woman, um, Indian American. And she obviously makes a lot of Indian dishes. She makes vegan food. And I'm trying to, I'm not going to become vegan. I'm not a vegan. I don't have that. I, I don't have the, um, the discipline for it. And I don't really want to do it anyway. But I am trying to cut out beef and pork. And to a certain extent, a lot of chicken and turkey and focus more on on uh, plant-based foods. And she, the young woman at uh, Rainbow Plant Life, is a genius when it comes to adapting almost any recipe to uh, a vegan um, vegan way of cooking. And I will tell you that I know this because I made her um, <laughs> her, her uh, uh, bolognese sauce, bolognese sauce, um, which utilized um, if I remember correctly, it utilized brown lentils instead of uh, ground beef. And it was absolutely delicious. I, The only thing I would have done differently is I don't think I cooked the lentils as long as I, as I would want to, to make them a little bit creamier. They were just a little too, um, you could still actually detect that you were eating, eating lentils from a, um, uh, from a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You could still detect that you were eating, you could still detect the lentils from a textural standpoint. And I, I that part of it took away from it a little bit for me. Um, I also have made her um, vegetable korma and her red lentil doll delicious, especially if you do it exactly the way she does it. I don't always do that because I don't always have the stuff, but when you do it the way she does it, it's it's delicious. And you just do your, you know, one of the skills that that they all tell you beforehand is your mise en plat. Your, you you do your prep before you start cooking so everything's ready and you don't have to mess around. I, <laughs> I still don't always do that. I should. But um, that's actually something that I think is fascinating about, about learning how to cook properly is just it's so common sense to a certain extent. And then let's see. I also really like... Um, Oh, another another vegan one is uh, Young Man Cooking, and it's uh, that's his name Y E U N G, Young Man Cooking. He's also vegan, and he he does a lot of Chinese uh, dishes, but also other other kinds of dishes. He actually also showed, I think he showed uh, pickled red onions as well. From him, I made I made pad Thai, and I it didn't come off the way I, I think it was supposed to because I'm not sure if I. I had all the ingredients or if I did it right, but um, I might try it again. I'm not a huge Pad Thai fan myself. Um, I do like it occasionally, but, and I've made other other dishes by him. His main thing is his spice cabinet is just un friggin believable. And his, he is so, uh, everything is just in the perfect place. Like it, it's so organized, it's crazy. So, um, and also, this guy has an amazing voice. Like I could just sit there and listen to him talking about anything really. Cause he has this really deep, but smooth voice and delivery. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful voice that you just want to sit there and just, it just like swallows you up. It's so amazing to listen to him. So just try it out for that, honestly. Um, let me see some of the other ones I like. I like Pylon's Kitchen or Hot Thai Kitchen. She does sort of, um, she does Thai food sometimes, and she'll do like a traditional version and then she'll do her own version. And she's really good. I haven't, I only recently discovered her, so I haven't tried anything from her yet, but I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm edging towards trying some of her stuff. Um, another one I love, French Cooking Academy. Uh, man, that is, again, I, the guy, 
who teaches this teaches because he also has he also you can sign up for lessons and, and so he's showing you how to do classic french food occasionally a modern twist on stuff but really amazing i love french food that that and indian food are my two well and italian food um and i guess uh yeah indian food italian food and french food are probably what i i tend to cook most and then some straight up american dishes some mexican dishes obviously some spanish dishes um occasionally a polish dish <laughs> so i don't know maybe i'm all over the place but i i love french cooking academy i have made um god what did i make from that i i made i made a couple of things a while ago that i really liked but he's also really good for learning french cooking skills in general that you can use and so i i find that fascinating and I intend to um, dive deeper into that because I'm sort of craving French food lately for some reason. So I'm going to try to jump into that. And then right next door to France, um, there is a great channel called Spain on a Fork. And I have made, I think, two dishes from that. I think poor, man, poor Man's Potatoes was one. And I think I made a bean dish. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember, though. It was, that was a while ago, too. But uh, Spain on a Fork love it um really good delivery uh, really enjoy just learning about spanish food because that's really not a cuisine that i am all that familiar with and there really aren't a lot of like you can't really find a lot of spanish restaurants or at least you couldn't i mean nowadays you can find the occasional tapas restaurant uh even here uh, where i live in atlanta there's actually several of them that i'm aware of uh, they get a little expensive for me though so i, I tend not to uh not to go to those, unfortunately, but um, really enjoy that one. Another one that I enjoy is Food Wishes. I've made a couple of things from that. Um, one I'm, I'm looking for here that I actually, uh, that I have made um, from is, uh, there's a guy who used to be the, uh, he used to be the, the head chef for the Queen of England. And I made um, I made fish and chips <laughs> twice uh, from his recipe, and came out really good, delicious. Uh, first time I've ever made homemade French fries from scratch, and first time I've ever fried fish. I did it because I wanted to. Um, I wanted to. Oh, Darren McGrady, that's what his name is. Darren McGrady, yeah, he he's the one who used to cook for the Queen, I think, and uh i my grandmother um was from liverpool and she used to have a fish fryer in the carport where she lived in florida and used to make uh used to do homemade fish and chips <laughs> and so i wanted to sort of i don't know recapture that and what i did was i used my dutch oven and made it and it was really good it didn't stink up the house like or, or if it did i actually liked the smell so you know uh but really excellent um I'm trying to remember now there I I, I have made um uh Yorkshire puddings for Christmas using I think it was a combination I, I think I looked at his recipes Darren McGrady's Jamie Oliver's I don't watch Jamie Oliver's uh, channel all that often and then um uh, his name is escaping me the the chef who's famous for always yelling at people um I have I did make Yorkshire puddings based on his his recipe for a uh, a beef stew that I made for not a beef stew um, a, a roast that I made for Christmas I wanted to do like a traditional pub pub style roast with Yorkshire puddings and all that a couple of Christmases ago and it came out delicious I think it was a combination of watching Jamie Oliver Darren McGrady and um, uh, I can't remember his name now the guy who was always yelling at people but uh, love his uh, show his YouTube channel as well don't watch it that often though. I tend to watch some of the smaller ones. Uh, the other ones I like, uh, home cooking with Jacques Pepin. I have made numerous things. Most recently, I made his uh, homemade ice cream based on sour cream. <laughs> I made his quick bread. Um, love his delivery. I used to watch him when he co-hosted on PBS with Julia Child. I used to watch Julia Child going back to high school, honestly. Um, in fact, 
I watched a lot of, uh, that's how I learned how to cook, was actually watching how I first tried to cook something for real, was watching PBS and watching Justin Wilson. I don't know if you guys remember him, he's a Louisiana chef. Um, he'd start off the show by, you know, I'm glad for you to see me. And so I was watching his show and he, I used to buy these um, uh, sweet potato pies at the grocery store. And, you know, they were fine, but they were always too sweet. Like you couldn't taste the sweet potato. And I just happened to be watching Justin Wilson on PBS and he did a, an episode on sweet potato pie. And I literally wrote the recipe down on the back of an envelope for some junk mail that I got. And I, I don't know if I still have that. I might have it lying around somewhere, but that was the very first thing, the very first complicated thing you could say that I cooked for myself that I was like, oh, I get it now. I can cook things so that I like them. <laughs> I don't have to just eat what is is pushed to me, what is given to me, what is what is available to me. I can actually make the things I like the way I want to make them, you know, and that's the whole point, right? So I loved that. And the other one on PBS I really liked for a Chinese boo was Yan Can Cook. I think he's still around. He may he may probably actually have a YouTube channel. I'm not sure about that. Um, I also really like Middle Eats. Uh, I'm really interested in Mediterranean cooking and Mediterranean, the Mediterranean diet, if you will, although the mind diet is close to that and I'm probably more interested in that, but I haven't made anything from Middle Eats yet, but I'm thinking about it. I'm watching some of the videos and sort of building myself up to it. And another one is Our Yemeni Kitchen. Uh, and I, if I remember correctly, that one is just silent and you're just observing what's going on. And then they have like a, they put in words on the screen, you know, what the ingredients are and, and what you need to do. And it's just like the lady's hands chopping stuff up and all of that. Uh, it's definitely a little different and looks pretty interesting. Let's see, what else is there? I think that's all of them that I want. Oh, Bon Appetit, I do watch that one pretty regularly. But yeah, there you have it. That's just one of the areas of YouTube um, that I I do watch. I watch a lot. I watch a lot of cooking, a lot of cooking videos on YouTube. I like seeing how, I like seeing the actual um, process because sometimes you read about a process and then when you try it yourself, you know, it's, it's uh, not the same. And another thing I like about at least most of those that I talked about, especially uh, Billy Parisi, are really good about like telling you to slow down. And like on the Food Network, a lot of times you'd see somebody chop, 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 and they just like zip through chopping an onion or chopping whatever to kind of showing off their skills a little bit. And, and, they, and, you know, they should be proud of that. They can do that, right? They're, they're professionals. They, they have to do it that fast in a kitchen. But I can't remember one of these. I think it was Billy Parisi is like, don't, don't hurry when you're chopping an onion. Don't, don't try to rush through it. Just chop it. Just make sure you chop it the right way at your own pace. Nobody's timing you. Nobody's watching you on TV. Just do it at your own pace and it'll be fine. You don't have to chop, chop, chop really fast. You know, I love the fact that a lot of them are just like, you don't have to do it this way. You can you can modify it as you want. There is no absolutely 100% correct way of doing it. Julia Child always said that. Jacques Pepin always says that. And I think that's the that's the crucial thing about cooking and eating the things that you want to eat the way the way you want them. Uh, that's kind of the whole idea for me anyway when it comes to uh, watching watching cooking channels on YouTube. So there you have it. Thank you very much.